Okay, this introduction is for the iWorksheet app on iPad. Uh, this app is available on the secondary carts, so on the middle level, as well as the high school iPad carts, and is available, I believe, on the teacher iPads for the middle level and secondary level. So it's up here at the top, iWorksheet. Um, if we go th to the home screen, if you've never used it before, um, you'll see this, which is basically the directions. It's three steps. It's very simple. The idea behind the iWorksheet app is to provide a multiple choice way for students to review. And that's really the way that it works best. It's not a testing app. It's not a quiz app. It's not a data collection app. It doesn't do any of that stuff. What it does is it takes paper copies of study guides or um, other worksheets that you have that are multiple choice. They must be multiple choice for this app to work. And allows you to um, have the kids take them in a digital format using the iPads and quickly check their work. Um, it works best probably for longer study guides for say unit review or perhaps even semester review where they're, you're going to have a series of questions and rather than having um, kids fill out the entire study guide, turn it in, and then have you grade it to figure out whether or not they got the answers right or spending class time to go over it, um, they can fill in the uh, answers here and then check their work. They are always going to have access to the answers. So again, this is not a worksheet assignment app or a testing app or anything like that. It's mainly for review since it's essentially um, self-graded. It could be a homework app too, something like that. So to get started, I'm going to click Get Started. And I'm going to add a worksheet up here at the top. You'll see that I already have my email address put in here. and um, the worksheet that I'm going to put in here is going to be uh, study guide three. Okay, and then uh, to get my worksheet into the system. I'm going to click that button which is going to open up the camera and you can see here I have a paper copy of a study guide it looks like chapter 18 and I'm going to take a picture of that. Now the quality of the image really depends on how carefully you take the, pic the picture so it's kind of important that you um, get everything lined up in focus before you actually snap it and then take a look at it. So this one's okay for what I'm doing um, so I'm going to use it. Now this is a very simplistic app. Uh, you might be wondering, well, can I just upload a PDF into here, yada, yada, yada. It doesn't really have an accessible database. So this camera way is really the only way. It's a very narrow, narrowly based app. You have to have a paper copy of it. Now you can see that there's a thumbnail of my worksheet in there. And then I would go through and I'd put the, the answers in comma separated. So I just put in 11 uh, answers as A just to do it quickly but you go through and put in A, B, C, D, E, whatever you have and then hit add my worksheet and it will drop it in. Now it tells you that it sends you a worksheet ID in your email and you'll need to use that code for load worksheet. Um, I think they, they're in the midst of doing an update with this app because on the app itself they've eliminated the load worksheet button which used to be up at the top um, you still get the email, you don't really need it anymore. For a kid, what they would need to do is when they log in, they would click Get Started, they'd go up here to My Worksheets, and then they would put in the teacher's email address. So it's in there, I click Search, and then here come up the worksheets that are available. So I'm going to click Study Guide 3 now, and you'll see here that the one of the difficult things is basically how you structure the study guide and how you take the picture. Unless you reduce the file size, um, you end up having this kind of scroll thing if you have your letters um, split up. So sometimes it's easier um, if you either reduce the file size of the image that the camera is taking, which you can, you can do from the settings, uh, or you're careful about how the questions and answers are, are set up, that sort of thing. 
But once it's in here, then I can go through and I can click A, B, and so forth, all the way down, select these answers as I read through and work through the study guide as a student, and then at the top, I'm going to click check my answers. To me, it would make the most sense if check my answers were down here at the bottom where it says show answers, but it, it's up at the top. And then it gives me red and green for which ones I got right and wrong, and then I can go back and look and say, oh yeah, that's why I got that one wrong, or I don't understand why I got that wrong, etc. It has the show answers button down here at the bottom, which of course cannot be turned off. So again, this is for self-review uh, or study guide basis, not for testing, because they'll always have access to these answers. Um, but the usefulness is essentially having if you have a study guide that's say 20, 30, maybe even 40 questions long because it's the end of a long unit or the end of a semester, um, it allows kids to work at it reviewing at their own pace and then check their work and focus on the ones that they got wrong. And it's more of an individualized approach rather than say going over the study guide in class. But you can see that the limitation here is it has to be multiple choice. So for some classes or some subjects this will work will work better than others. So that's the iWorksheet app.